So I'm traveling to Italy in April to deliver a paper at a conference on the philosophy of time. The theme is, is really um, to revisit the debate between Bergson and Einstein that took place uh, in 1922 in Paris. It wasn't really a debate, it was a pretty brief exchange between the two where um, Bergson defended his um, understanding of philosophical time, which he described in his book Creative Evolution and in other works as a kind of um, living duration that we pass through that has a certain uh, phenomenological depth that gives meaning to our lives as human beings. And Einstein um, defended uh, his uh, theory of relativity, which in terms of the physical world really left no room for the time of lived experience, the time that is irreversible. You know, the Newtonian picture of the universe also left no room for uh, the time of human experience, or at least as a constituent of the world itself. Um, but Einstein carries forward this tradition, though his theory makes space and time relative rather than Newton's absolute uh, pictures of these um, you know, um, big ideas of space and time. Einstein is still uh, describing a universe wherein the direction of time is irrelevant. Um, the equations of physics, relativity physics, work in both directions. Um, so Einstein dismissed Bergson's merely psychological time as um, an illusion, where what was real finally, were the equations of physics. Einstein's universe was a deterministic one. Bergson's was not. Bergson says um, time is invention or it is nothing at all. Bergson's was a philosophy of freedom, surely. Really, uh, it's a philosophy rooted more in an intuition of life than it is in um, the, a purportedly objective description of the physical world as it exists independently of the mind. Bergson was more of an integral thinker, trying to think mind and matter not as two distinct substances, but rather as um, you know, facets of a single process. Um, Bergson was in this sense like another 20th century philosopher, Alfred North Whitehead, who similarly quarreled with Einstein, though in a less public setting than, than Bergson. Um, I believe Whitehead was at uh, J.B.S. Haldane's home uh, for a dinner reception and spoke to Einstein and uh, tried to give voice to what he would eventually, Whitehead would eventually come to call his uh, protest against the bifurcation of nature, which is this um, modern scientific notion that goes back to Galileo, um, Descartes, the idea that there are primary and secondary qualities, the idea that there is um, a mental dimension to things and a physical dimension to things, and that, at least for Galileo, the mental dimension to things is sort of added on. Um, it's extra and it's in that sense epiphenomenal, whereas what's primarily going on is what we can measure mathematically. There's mass, you know, length, width, and height. Um, things that we can quantify. That's what's primarily real for the modern scientist, uh, whereas the secondary qualities are merely psychic additions. And Whitehead had an alternative rendering of Einstein's relativity theory. Whitehead was also a mathematician and a physicist and wanted to reinterpret Einstein's theory so that it didn't uh, make space-time and mass-energy fundamental, but rather um, space-time and events 
fundamental to the universe. So Whitehead's a process ontologist, um, fully relativistic in his understanding, but unlike Einstein, wants to see what's the final real things that make up, that compose the physical world as events, rather than particles, say, um, or a space-time fabric of some kind. Like Bergson, Whitehead wanted to preserve a sense of real creativity, whereas Einstein seems to have held to some kind of block universe idea where in the fourth dimension, uh, as you know, described in the Lorentz um, equations and the Minkowskian geometry, four-dimensional geometry, the future already exists, and our perception of time is sort of a flat window pane that moves through this block universe, um, but again is sort of fundamentally illusory, or at least secondary, to what is just this eternal block, which contains all time. There's no room for creativity in that Einsteinian universe. Whitehead wants to preserve a sense of becoming, creative becoming, and of nature as a creative advance into novelty. And so we have to be careful here, though, because it's Whitehead's position is not the same as Bergson's. Bergson thought that the scientific view of the universe was incurably mechanistic, incurably spatialized, that it could never include or do justice to our lived experience, the universe as we experience from the inside, as we experience it from the inside out. Bergson thought we just needed to let science continue to do it, it's an inherently mechanistic thing, and just not reduce away or um, belittle this other more existential creative work as human beings that we have to do to make meaning. Um, of our experience. Whitehead wanted to reform science, radically uh, reform it, to put it on an organic basis, to allow it to include um, recognition of creativity, that yes, nature is clearly full of repetition, but that repetition is not um, deterministic. It's repetition with a difference Nothing happens for the same time. No, no, nothing happens uh, twice in nature, right? Heraclitus would say you can't step into the same river twice. Um, we could even be more radical than that and say you can't step into the same river once because you are never the same. In each moment of your uh, existence, the, the stream of consciousness is unfolding and you're becoming something new. No thinker thinks twice, is how Whitehead puts it. And so Whitehead's conception of science is science as organic, where instead of talking about um, atoms interacting, obeying deterministic laws in space-time, Whitehead wants to talk about organisms evolving in an ecology. So just as Einstein's relativity theory is beginning to bring us, um, to, to bring space-time out of the background into the foreground, Whitehead's pushing that even further, or rather uh, allowing it so that um, we no longer conceive of space-time as this four-dimensional fabric that's somehow invisible or inaccessible to our um, experience, to our phenomenological lived uh, world. Whitehead wants to say that um, what space-time ultimately is, is a community of organisms, right? And our experience is a participant in the ongoing construction of that space-time, uh, of that community of organisms. And it's the way that these organisms experience each other. Uh, and for Whitehead, electrons are organisms, atoms are, are organisms, stars are organisms, galaxies are organisms. Um, when we talk specifically in terms of biology, it's we're talking about organisms at that biological scale, but for Whitehead, physics is also the study of organisms. Cosmology is the study of the evolution of um, non-biological organisms, or physical organisms, you might say. And space-time is not the background to that evolution. Space-time is that evolution. 
So in a sense, Whitehead's just trying to carry the Einsteinian paradigm shift even further. So, I don't know, some of the ideas that I've been throwing around. Um, if anyone has any reading suggest suggestions for me on uh, the philosophy of time, let me know. I've been reading Carlo Rovelli, as you'll know if you've watched my recent videos, and I'm hoping to bring him into this conversation with Whitehead and Bergson and, and Einstein. I think Rovelli, I continue to believe that Rovelli's blue quantum gravity and his understanding of time, not as an illusion, but as an approximation to what's really going on, is actually quite in alignment with, with Whitehead's process relational uh, ontology. So, yeah. Back to writing.